So now to complete our look at nutrient digestion, we'll entitle the next flowchart Nutrient Digestion, and this will be part two. So here we continue to look at figure 41.12 as we go through this to see this in a more visually representative form. Now, the other two nutrients that we have to look at and how they're digested are nucleic acids and lipids. So let's begin by looking at nucleic acids. Let me rewrite that. Nucleic acids. So these are things like DNA and RNA. So this is also consumed by us. As weird as it sounds, we do eat DNA and RNA of other organisms. And so in order to break this down, we need to make sure that it gets to its constituent components. We need to break down to smaller components like nitrogenous bases, N bases for short, the sugars that are found within DNA like deoxyribose and ribose. We need those and we also want the specific phosphate backbone molecules. We want those separated. All together we want to just break down DNA and RNA into its specific components. And in order to do that, we have to utilize digestion. So how and when do we do this? Let's first begin at the oral cavity. Do we see any digestion of nucleic acids there? No, there is none. Now we'll move to the stomach. Is there any digestion of nucleic acids there? No, there is none. There is going to be digestion of nucleic acids at that very important small intestine the major site of digestion and absorption. So let's take a look at what happens here. Small intestine. Here, what we have is the following. From the pancreas, so the pancreas as an accessory gland does a lot, it will exocrinely secrete pancreatic juice. So pancreatic juice, PJ, has within it what are known as pancreatic, they come from the pancreas, nucleases. Pancreatic nucleases will be good at breaking down DNA and RNA, thus the name nucleases for breaking down nucleic acids. In addition, the small intestine itself produces two things that are also good at breaking down DNA and RNA. Those are nucleotidases, because DNA and RNA is made up of a bunch of nucleotides, and also phosphatases. Phos Phosphatases. These will break down and break off those phosphates that we want. So these are uh, components of nucleic acids that we want, to, that cells want to uptake. And we get them by utilizing pancreatic nucleases, nucleotidases, and phosphatases. So basically, in summary, what we can state is that the small intestine, as a major structure of digestion and breakdown, will be the place at which we have, overall, as a result of these enzymes, we're going to have the breakdown of both DNA and RNA that was ingested. Okay, so that covers our look at nucleic acids. One final nutrient to look at, and this one's a little bit more complicated than the others, are lipids. Lipids are just fats. When we eat fats, they are going to be ingested, we're going to consume them in a form that is called triacylglycerides. That's usually how we consume fats. Triacyl glycerides. These are more commonly just referred to as triglycerides. You can also call them triacylglycerides, whatever you're feeling. So these are fats. What are we supposed to do with them? Well, first of all, off the boat, off the top, there is going to be uh, a problem. And the problem is that fats as molecules, as macromolecules, are generally speaking very much hydrophobic. Now, why is this a problem? What do all of the enzymes that break down stuff in digestion use? Hydrolysis. They need to use water. Enzymes use hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis. They use this process. That means that they themselves can't act on these hydrophobic lipids because they are afraid of them. The water is not going to interact well with the lipid that is hydrophobic. Therefore, we state that these enzymes can only really access the surface of fats. The surface of fats. Now, why is that? Because the fat head, the glycerol head, has a bit of hydrophilicity in it. It has some OH groups in it. So it's a little bit hydrophilic, and so the enzymes can work on just the surface of the fats, but they cannot 
not, those fatty acid tails, those hydrocarbon tails are very, very hydrophobic. So how do we break down large fat globules that are triglycerides, these huge, huge molecules, if we have enzymes that can only work on just little pieces, little parts of the fat? We can do this by utilizing a couple of different enzymes. Now, be before we get into that, let's take a look at what happens at the oral cavity. Do we have any breakdown of fats at the oral cavity? I'll tell you that there's very, very little breakdown in this, almost negligible amount. The figure, 41.12, won't even put any. But I just want to let you know that there is something called lingual lipase, uh, lipase, meaning it breaks down fats, that will break down fats within the mouth, but it's very little, almost negligible. Just keep that in mind. Now, there will also be something that will happen in the stomach. The stomach will also have very, very little breakdown of fats. Your notes don't mention this, but again, I want to be as accurate as possible with you. I won't write it down, but it's called gastric lipase. Gastric lipase is also within the stomach, both of which uh, lingual lipase and gastric lipase do do a little bit of breaking down of lipids, but not for the purposes of this course. You don't really need to know that. So I just want to make sure that it's clear that's very, very little, almost negligible. Where the majority of this happens is in the small intestine, and that's utilizing something known as bile salts. We've mentioned bile salts before, but we sort of uh, uh, brushed over their function. Let's look at their function in a little bit more detail. Bile salts are good because they adhere to fats. When you have bile salt adhering to fat, this is called emulsification. Bile salts emulsify fats. Emulsification. Uh, let me rewrite that. Emulsification. So bile salts emulsify fats. What does that mean? When you have emulsification via bile salts on fats, what we do is the following. This causes a breakup of the large masses, because fats are very large molecules, large masses of fats into smaller droplets, much more accessible, much more digestible, much more breakable smaller fat droplets. Originally fats are triglycerides, huge globules of triglycerides that can now be broken down into smaller droplets or broken down into smaller droplets because bile salts have emulsified them. Now why is this useful? Well remember the enzymes can only access the surface and if we have tons of little droplets we have tons of little surfaces to access and that's good because now it's not just a bunch of hydrocarbon tails we just have very specific surfaces that can be accessed by these bile salts so we initially we basically created more surface area for the enzymes that use hydrolysis because we have small droplets that have very specific glycerol areas that have lots of surface area for the enzymes to access because the droplets are just basically going to be surface of the fats, okay? Because droplets are just the fat surface. And that's good because the fat surface, which is glycerol, can be broken down by enzymes. Those fatty acid tails, those are usually going to be stored in some way, shape, or form via the liver. The liver is very good at um, manipulating and modifying fat to store it for later use. Okay. So we have this breakdown now possibility. Where does this occur? This breakdown, of course, will occur within the small intestine primarily because the small intestine will have pancreatic juice that comes from the pancreas, and that pancreatic juice will contain within it pancreatic lipase, the enzyme that is good at breaking down lipids. And it breaks down these lipids. It breaks down to... Uh, a couple of different constituent components. That would be the glycerol molecule will become its own thing. We can utilize that for other stuff, fatty acids, and also monoglycerides. So the fatty acids will be sort of cleaved off and they'll be sent off to somewhere else and monoglycerides may also be sort of formed as a result of this breakdown of a triglyceride. So we get the glycerol head, we get the individual fatty acids, and sometimes we just get one fatty acid tail and one glycerol head as a result of lipid nutrient digestion. That covers our look at nutrient digestion. Be sure to take a look at the figure to see exactly where and what is occurring in what parts of the different compartments. And we'll finally conclude this lecture by looking at the term and idea of absorption.